All right, we're going to cover semicolons and commas to separate clauses, which is C.1 in IXL. There's another one that a lot of you have had a really hard time with. So we'll go through kind of what a semicolon is used for, when you would use a comma in this situation, what a conjunction is, and it'll be really fun. So uh, first off, we should talk about coordinating conjunctions, which I know as soon as an English teacher says words like that, you just want to pass out. Um, so we'll make it as quick, as painless as I possibly can. The easiest way that I can remember this is by remembering this mnemonic device, fanboys. These are our coordinating conjunctions. Um, and they're what we're gonna look for. Uh, step one is gonna be looking for any of these words in the sentences, and particularly right after the uh, place in the sentence where we're not sure uh, whether we should put a comma or a semicolon or nothing. Okay, so in this example, we see but, which is a fanboy's word, right after that. So that was step one to look for that. Okay, step two is to figure out whether or not we're dealing with. Uh, complete uh, clauses, uh, we'll call them just complete sentences for the sake of simplicity, which basically means that we have a subject and a verb. Um, this can be complicated, so I, I'm going to rely on a little bit of common sense here. We're just going to ask ourselves as we're reading uh, ourselves as we're reading these examples if the clauses in question seem complete or not. Does this seem like it's a complete sentence or not? Um, and we'll go from there. Okay, so that's step two. So let's do an example so you can see what I'm talking about. Step one, we do have a conjunction. Step two, let's see if what's on the left of this box and what's on the right of that conjunction are complete sentences. Hummingbirds don't have a sweet taste receptor. That is a complete sentence. Hummingbirds have, right? On the right side of the butt, are still able to recognize nectar sweet. We don't have a subject there. What is still able to? We're relying on the subject from the beginning here. So this is not a complete sentence. So let's write down what we have. We have a complete followed by a conjunction, followed by an incomplete. Uh, and we'll just write that in shorthand. So complete uh oh no. conjunction followed by incomplete and in this scenario uh, we're going to do no punctuation at all and the reason for that is uh, let me see if i can give you a simpler example to illustrate this point um, i like eating bread and jam you wouldn't put a comma there you wouldn't put a semicolon there. You'd leave that blank. You have a complete sentence. I like eating bread. Conjunction. Incomplete sentence. In this case, the I like eating is, is applying to the jam. So there's no need to write a comma in there. Um, and certainly no need to do a semicolon. And even in a longer sentence, it's the same way. I mean, birds don't have a sweet taste receptor, but are still able to recognize nectar sweetness due to the mutation that you... You mammy? You mammy. You mommy? I have no idea. Taste receptors. So, uh, nothing. Every summer, Mrs. Brock takes a canoe trip down to the Sparrowtown River. She uses a two person whitewater canoe to navigate the class four rapids. Step one is to figure out if we have a coordinated conjunction. No. Step two is to ask ourselves about complete sentences. Every summer, Mrs. Brock takes a canoe trip down the Sparrowtown River. That is a complete thought, a complete sentence. We could put a period there and it would make sense. She uses a two-person whitewater canoe to navigate the class four rapids. That also is a complete sentence. She, the subject, uses. Uh, and then we have uh, some extra stuff, but <laughs> we have a complete sentence. It's a complete thought. You could put a period there and feel pretty good about it. So this is good for scenario two. Uh, we'll call this scenario one. Do scenario two. 
and that would be a complete no conjunction and complete. And this is the situation where we would use a semicolon. Now, it is the infamous semicolon. So many kids have no idea. But yeah, kids, people. So many people don't have any idea how to use this at all. Um, the best way that I can think of to remember it is that it's a half period, half comma. And that's what it looks like, right? It's a period on top, comma on bottom. And what I mean by that is you use it in situations where you have a complete sentence on the left and right, but they seem so closely related that it seems awkward to use a period. So technically, you could do this. And there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, a lot of writers choose to forego using a semicolon at all and just stick the periods. Um, but these are so closely related that it almost looks weird. It almost looks like it makes more sense to do that. But you can't do that because that's a complete sentence and that's a complete sentence. So semicolon is a good tool to use here. It's a half period, half comma. It's a period because they're both complete, comma because they're intimately related. The same thing applies here. Every summer, Mrs. Brock takes a canoe trip down the Sparktown River. She uses a two-person whitewater canoe to navigate the rapids. You could put a period there and capitalize the S, um, or we could do a semicolon. Since Irene started attending culinary school last spring, she's become far more discerning in her restaurant choices. Fantastic. Question one, do we have a coordinating conjunction? No. Question two, do we have complete sentences? She's become far more discerning in her restaurant choices, Alec observed. That is a complete sentence. Great. Since Irene started attending culinary school last spring. Ah, oh, that's not a complete sentence. And it doesn't sound complete, right? If you put a period there, since Irene started attending culinary school last spring, uh, it seems like there's something missing. It's like we just went off a cliff. Like, finish the thought. It's not a complete sentence. It's not a complete thought. And so that gives us our third scenario. What happens if we have an incomplete with no conjunction and then a complete? Well, in that case, not a comma, a comma is what we use. I have an incomplete sentence. When I was a boy, feels like there should be something that comes after that. No conjunction, and then we have a complete. I like chocolate. So in this case, this is called an introductory clause. We're just introducing the main portion of our sentence. I like chocolate. Um, and the reason for this is that we could basically reorganize it like this, make it passive. Subject, verb, and then uh, following information. Um, but when it's written like this, it's called an introductory clause. Um, and we need a comma there. So incomplete, no conjunction, uh, complete, we use a comma. Okay. There are a total of four scenarios, so we'll see if we can get the last one. The taking photographs, French photographer Henri cartier bosson wanted to remain an unseen witness, so perfect. So he sometimes concealed his camera under his handkerchief. So question one, do we have a coordinated conjunction? And one of them is so, is the fanboy's word. We have a complete sentence on the left. We have an introductory clause, but it finishes it out. When taking photographs, French photographer Henri Cartier-Bresson wanted to remain an unseen witness. Period. He sometimes concealed his camera under a handkerchief. Oh, this is a tough one. So what do we do if we have a complete sentence with a conjunction? As in... I like bread and I like jam. 
complete sentence, conjunction, complete sentence. And the answer here is comma, and this might be the most common mistake I see kids make in the papers. Um, not only kids, I mean, I see a lot of books with this uh, mistake uh, all throughout it, all, all throughout the books. Um, you must do a comma here. You have a complete clause and a complete clause. You have to signify a break. And so the comma falls in the middle of this. And this is a tough one to remember. So here's a mnemonic device. I just remember four C's. You have a complete with a conjunction and then a complete, you need a comma. Complete sentence, conjunction, complete, we need a comma. Okay, let's do a few more examples here. Oh, this is a good example. Uh, let's see, most people have never heard of Sybil Ludington. I certainly haven't. Nevertheless, in 1777, the 16 year old girl made a 40 mile night ride far longer than Paul Revere's ride to warn the local militia of the imminent approach of the British troops. So what do we do here? Uh, nevertheless is a special um, type of word. Um, probably can't see this. Uh, it's called the conjunctive adverb. Um, and I don't think any of you will remember that. Here's what I'd like you to remember. If you see words like nevertheless, otherwise, therefore, um, thus, those are all special types of words, um, and they all operate the same way. You need to put a semicolon before it and a comma, comma after it. This is another really, really common mistake. If you see nevertheless, or therefore, or thus, or otherwise, put a semicolon before it and a comma after it. Um, it's a way to start a new sentence, basically, but you can't start a sentence with nevertheless. In the 19th century, albumin, or the clear part of the inside of an egg, was an inexpensive material used for photographic printing. Complete. Conjunction. Commercial photographers actually kept chickens on site. Complete. So, if you remember, that's CCCCC. You can wear button-down shirts tucked in for a formal look, or unbuttoned with a tank top underneath for a more casual style. So we have complete, conjunction, incomplete. Complete, conjunction, incomplete, no punctuation. If people are deprived of REM sleep, their bodies will adjust by reducing the time spent in other sleep stages, a phenomenon called REM rebound. There is no conjunction. This is a complete sentence. This is not. Incomplete, no conjunction, complete. Incomplete, no conjunction, complete. We need a comma because that's an introductory clause. 2008, making sprinter Usain Bolt won the 100 and 200 meter races. Moreover, ah, didn't talk about that one. Nevertheless, otherwise, thus, moreover. Conjunctive adverbs. Uh, last one. City Lights Bookstore in San Francisco has been a defining institution for the beat generation since its founding in 1953. Complete. And. It's a conjunction. The store continues to stand against censorship and publish new titles to this day. Complete. C, 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 C. Okay. So to summarize, uh, this is tough. Figuring out where to put semicolons versus commas to separate clauses. But there are really two things you should look out for. Number one, conjunctions. Number two, complete sentences or complete cl clauses. Uh, there are four scenarios that you'll find. I'm hoping that you're not just going to try to memorize this just for a you know technical understanding. I'm hoping that it's actually intuitive that you're that you're understanding how this works. Why you wouldn't put a comma in that sentence? There, there's no need. Why this is a half period, half comma? Um, why for an introductory clause you need a comma? Um, and then this is the toughest one. Why if you have a complete and a complete and a conjunction, you put a comma there. Um, hope this makes sense. If uh, not, feel free to email me and I will see you in class. Thanks.